Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In part one of this presentation, Dr. Michael Claridge, a scientist on the Sapphire Project team, began his analysis of a recent landmark discovery, which shows a surprising relationship between sunspots and solar flares. As Dr. Claridge explained, the discovery that solar flares seem to have a powerful influence on sunspots is highly problematic for standard solar theory. In this episode, Dr. Claridge explores what may be the fundamental difference between the standard and electric universe concepts of the sun. And that is, in an electric universe, stars are not the isolated bodies envisioned in standard theory. Scientific thought exists in layers, or levels. At the top, we have theories. Below that, we have scientific models. And below that, we have data. I have stacked them vertically because these three aspects, theory, models, and data, are not of equal weight or equal power. Scientific theories, the top level, are what you might call big ideas. They set the overall framework for years of work where many scientists can create many models and do lots of experiments collecting lots of data. Scientific theories change very slowly, over centuries. The models change more quickly. And new data? It's coming in every day. I am going to talk through some reasons why this new sunspot data is so important for our understanding of scientific theories and models. Current theory, and I want you to notice that I am using the word theory, which is the highest level of my diagram, says that each star in our great universe is isolated from every other star. Yes, you may not know that about mainstream cosmology, but mainstream cosmology assumes that every star in our galaxy is isolated from every other star. Like our picture of a medieval lord, each isolated star creates its own energy only from within itself. But if you entertain the idea that stars might be energetically connected to each other, if you entertain the idea that stars might receive energy from the galaxy, of which they are a part, just as cells in our own bodies receive sustenance from our bodies as a whole, then we have in our hands a very different scientific theory. We are at a point in cosmology where there are two world views. The old world view, as I mentioned, sees all stars as energetically isolated. The new worldview says that stars are energetically connected and can influence each other. The new worldview goes further to acknowledge different levels of energies. There are energies that exist at planetary levels like weather and lightning and the northern lights. And then there are energies that operate at the scale of stars, solar flares, the solar wind and the heliospheric current sheet. But there's also energies that operate at the level of galaxies. And all these levels are connected. In the new worldview, the planets receive solar energies and transform those or scale them down so that lightning and weather on our planet are manifestations of what happens when a planet absorbs and digests solar energies. And just as a planet would be blown to smithereens if it were hit by the full power of a star, so would a single star be blown to bits if it were to ever receive the full energy of a galaxy. But individual stars can absorb and digest their small portion of these galactic energies. The stellar activities of solar flares and sunspots and the solar wind are what happens when stars take in their small portion of galactic energies. Asked if there is any data that might support such a new worldview, I can only say that much of the evidence has already been seen, but we have not known how to understand what we are seeing. We scoff at people several hundred years ago who thought the Earth was the center of all things. 
For a few hundred years now, we have had been thinking in terms of the sun being the center of all things. So how are we really any better? It is time now to add another and larger level to our cosmology and truly see that stars are part of a larger, a more energetic world. Look, for example, at this wonderful image from the Herschel telescope we can see clearly that stars form on filaments, galactic filaments. I can tell you that none of the models of the old worldview predicted that. In fact, such a result would have been impossible. Here is a situation similar to Chang Liu's paper. The old theories not only did not predict that stars would form this way, the old theories said it was impossible. Yet, in the new cosmology that I'm trying to describe, this result of stars forming on threads was predicted by such theorists as Wall Thornhill long before the images started coming back from the Herschel telescope. He was able to predict exactly what the new telescopes show us because he was starting from a very different theory of how galaxies and stars are related. This infrared data from Herschel is just one example. Fresh images and data are coming in every day of our Earth, of other planets, of the solar system, and the planets that orbit other stars. When the recent results were published that a nearby star has seven planets orbiting it, all of which might harbor life, I asked my students, are you surprised that we are discovering that most stars have planets orbiting them? And the vast majority of my students said no. They were not surprised at all. I was very encouraged by this because it shows that they have an inherent sense that these sorts of hierarchies are to be expected. Our solar system is not unusual or any sort of exception. And I encourage anyone out there to start looking at the wealth of the new data from NASA, ESA, and other agencies. Look at the data from the point of view of a new cosmology. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.